Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another review of a DAPO O-Gage locomotive. So the last O-Gage Loco I reviewed was absolutely phenomenal in my opinion. If you want to check it out, I'll put a link up there. It was of course the Terrier. Now in that video, I put up a poll to ask you guys which Dapple Loco or any O-Gage Loco you'd like me to review next. And the overwhelming answer was the 14XX, by far the most popular. So sure enough, I have picked one up. Here it is. Now I'm really excited about this one. Of course, the 14XX are just beautiful, beautiful locos. Great Western, of course. Just can't wait to see this in O-Gage. If this is finished to the same standard that the Terrier was, I think we're going to be in for a really, really good day today. So the RRP for this particular model is £225, which obviously is a lot of money, but as with the Terrier, it's not really very much for an O gauge loco. I paid a little bit less than that. I bought mine from Hattons for £191.25, I think it was. So less than 200 quid. That's not too bad at all. Like I say, I think it will be worth it if it's as good as the Terrier was. So I'm not going to waste any time. Let's get this out and find out. And I cannot wait to see this for the first time. Very, very exciting stuff. All right, come with me. Let's do it. So, first things first, the box weighs a ton. It really is incredibly heavier. I would say, if memory serves correctly, that this feels a lot heavier than the Terrier, which is impressive, of course, because the 14XX were known for being really, really lightweight. And here we have probably the heaviest model railway box I've ever had in my life. So that's really cool. As you can see, we have a nice line drawing of the loco on the front of the box. Can't wait to see the real thing, or the model, I guess. Uh, if I show you what's on the end of the box, you can see the version I went for. So I went for 7S-006-023. It's a 14XX. I went for the BR Lakecrest lined. Uh, this was one of the few lined versions that Dapol had on offer, so I went for that one. Uh, it's green, 1426, auto-fitted, top feed, I guess that means. And it is DCC ready with a 21-pin decoder socket. So I think we are free to lift the lid of the box then. So let's do that and see what this baby is like. Yeah, the price seems really reasonable, doesn't it? Okay, paperwork. Let's take a look. Oh, gosh. Here we go. You know things are serious when you've got instructions that show you how to remove the model from the packaging. Crikey, what? So it's screwed into a plastic sort of cage, is it? Okay, well, I'll have to read that and make sure I do it properly. Next up, we seem to have a booklet here, which is really good. Let's have a look inside. It's an owner's manual, it says. Okay, all colour printing. Wow, this looks really, really good. Okay, so this seems to cover all sorts of stuff. We start off with DCC fitting, it looks like. Wow, I'll have to check through some of this. Oh, look, we've got parts list, it seems. Wow. Okay, very good. Okay, so full marks on instructions. I will have to check those before I start uh, unpacking the thing or anything. Uh, what is this? Uh, I'm not sure what this is, actually. Maybe the instructions will tell us what to do with that, but I ain't worried about the little bag with uh, bits of tat in it for now. Let's have a look at the loco, shall we? Okay, let's see what the damage is with that packaging. Oh, my word. Look there. Wow. So, yeah, this packaging seems excessive, but do you know what? There was steps broken off my terrier, but if this comes out in perfect condition, I'll be all for the uh, packaging. Okay, so let's pull this out. I mean, the actual removal from the box should be a bit safer with this because obviously you're not touching the loco. Um, however, it's not coming out terribly simply, so let's just flip it over, see if I can. Hmm. Let's try and remove the foam first. Ah, look, what was I just saying? Ah, oh, that's a shame. So we've got a suspension spring off already. So why, if, I don't know, fair enough. I won't complain about the massive plastic enclosure. Let's just try and get the thing out, okay? <laughs> and there it is, and my goodness, it is not just the box that weighs a lot. This thing is incredibly heavy. But I don't want to damage it getting it out, so I will just consult the instruction manual on how to actually undo the packaging, just to make sure I'm doing it right, and I'll come back to you once I'm ready to start. Okay, I've been to university and I've studied engineering and I, I think I'm now qualified to open the box. So we've got to remove the large screws. Wow, this doesn't seem very environmentally friendly, does it? And like I say, the Terrier just came in the sort of blister tray. 
Man, look at these big screws. This must have been quite expensive. Yeah, the Terrier came in the tray and it had a small amount of damage. Uh, this comes in this insane plastic enclosure and there's still bits missing from it. Well, at least one piece. But hopefully I'll be able to put that on as I did with these steps. Wow. So now I'll have to turn this upside down, support it with foam and undo the screws on the bottom of the loco apparently, which hold it on. So let's put, oh gosh. This looks difficult. What's gone on with there? There's uh, some sort of metal piece here which is not attached. No idea what that is. We'll have to have a look and put that somewhere safe. Yeah, this packaging is not good, I've got to say. There are so far two missing parts and you've got to go through all this heartache just to get the thing apart. Right, so we've got holes in the bottom. What do I do here? Fair enough. I think I'll need a smaller screwdriver though. Yeah, I think Dapol must have had a funny turn with this because I currently am balancing the Loco on its back, well, on its chimney basically, trying to get these screws out. I've already got two repairs to make because obviously this packaging doesn't really protect the Loco that well. I'm just hoping it will survive the process to be honest. Right, are we there? Man, that was kind of frustrating, must be said. But I think we are there with it. Okay. Wow, this thing is incredibly heavy. Incredibly so. So there it is. This thing is beautiful. Has it got the die-cast running plate? Yes, I think it does. Wow. Now, I'm not going to say too much about the quality right now because, as I say, I've got to figure out where those pieces came from that have detached from the model. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame about that. It's a shame that this incredibly convoluted packaging couldn't have done a better job. However, it seems that the Loco is largely unscathed. I will have to double check it. But this looks astonishing. Wow. And it is very, very heavy, as I say. I will weigh it for you. Okay, so we'll take a look at some of the details in just a second. First of all, though, here's a little bit of history on the 14XX class. So the 14XX, originally known as the 4800 class, was introduced to the Great Western to the design of Charles Collett in 1932. The class was lightweight and intended for branch line passenger work. A total of 75 of the class were built over four years and they were eventually reclassified to 14XX when some of the 2800 class, which were a larger class of 280 locomotives, were experimentally converted for oil firing. These were classified the 4800 class instead and therefore displacing the 14XX. So these locos were designed specifically for auto coaches which were fitted with actual driving cabs which allowed the driver to pilot the locomotives remotely. They were never that successful though and sadly they were eventually scrapped from 1956 but there are quite a lot of those in preservation. As for the 14XX, four have been preserved while the rest also were sadly scrapped. Okay, so there it is then, the Dapol O-Gage 14XX, and this is an absolutely sublime model. As I'm sure you can tell already, this is incredibly, incredibly impressive. I have to say, though, that my first hour's experience with this model has been spoiled, unfortunately. It's supposed to be a really exciting, joyous occasion, but it has been ruined very slightly by the packaging which is silly in my opinion. So first of all, it's really, really wasteful. It weighs over 200 grams. That's 200 grams of plastic and screw just on that plastic cage alone. That doesn't include the foam. It's really, really fiddly to get out. You have to undo, what is it, five screws. The loco has to be balanced on its chimney and cab in order to get three of them out. And don't forget, that's only getting the model out. If you want to take it anywhere in the future to an exhibition or to a swap meet or to a friend's house, you've got to go through all the hell of getting it in and out of that again. But don't get me wrong, all of that would be completely forgivable if the packaging did a really, really good job of protecting the Loco, but quite obviously it does not. I've done an inspection of the Loco and the damage is quite considerable. First of all, the packaging means that the Loco is not cushioned whatsoever, it's completely unsupported. The whole thing is held by those three screws on the bottom and then it sits on its side, so the entire model is completely unsupported, it's just held by the base. So during transit, every little bump and every little episode of mishandling, the Loco is going to really feel that and it really shows. So I've already had to repair part of the suspension, which I've put back on. The handrail was a really fiddly one to refit, but I've managed to do that. 
I've also discovered that some other components have been knocked free as well. There's a bit of pipe work there which needs repairing and also the brake rigging has been knocked loose either because of a quality problem or because of the packaging. I can't say that all of this is the fault of the packaging but whichever it is, packaging, quality fault, it's not really acceptable. While we're talking about the quality there are a few issues. The paintwork in some areas is a little bit sloppy as you can see some of the coal here has just been left white. And on some parts of the die cast, the paintwork is not great. There's some rivets there that haven't been painted properly. And the etched nameplates really don't look very good. They look to be quite poor quality, don't they? Yeah, almost quite dirty looking. Really not very good, that. £191 is obviously only a good price if the thing is in perfect condition. So it's a great shame about all of that, obviously. A little bit of a disappointment. However, it doesn't take away from the fact that the model is incredibly, incredibly impressive, as I've already said. Even more so, of course, had it been delivered in perfect condition. But let's take a look at some of this. So the lining on the boiler is really, really good. It is a little bit sloppy in some areas, as you can see, and the boiler is spoiled very slightly by some quite noticeable seam lines going on there. It's a little bit of a shame about that, but it's not the end of the world. The tanks are much better, as you can see the lining here can't be faulted really, and you've got the British Railways crest there which looks fantastic doesn't it, that is really really nicely applied. And the lining elsewhere on the model is really well done, as you can see by the side of the coal bunker there, it's very impressive. The sheer number of separately fitted parts on this though is just phenomenal. So my favourite is this, the uh, safety valve bonnet here. It is actually made of metal, that piece. It doesn't look it, it's not got the sort of high shine that you might want from a piece that looks like that. But it is made of metal and I guess it does look better than the plastic ones do. Behind there we have the whistles which again look good don't they? They may be plastic, they may be metal, but either way they look fantastic which is great. On top of the tanks we have loads of separately fitted parts. You can see these little rings, they are actually separately fitted which is incredible. All of the handrails and such are separately fitted around the tanks and around the cab area. And look at this, the cab doors even open, <laughs> which is just an incredible detail. That is fantastic, isn't it? I mean, this is a reasonably inexpensive O-Gage logo and it has features like that. Now, they're not perfect. The cab door on the other side is a bit wonky, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, I don't think the effect is spoiled as a result of that at all. The running plate is heavy metal, as I've already mentioned, and the Loco weighs an awful lot. It weighs 693 grams. That's very, very heavy. That's around 250 grams more than the Terrier, which weighed 447. So it's a very, very heavy beast indeed. The running plate, as you can see, has got pipework fitted to it, which is very nice and fine. And there are many, many separately fitted details. You've got toolboxes there, little control rods. We have what appear to be separately fitted lamp brackets, which is amazing. Between the frames, you can see a really realistic representation of the valve gear there. Whether that is actually functional or not on this model, I'm not sure. So we'll have to find that out, I suppose. But it does look incredibly convincing there. Slightly spoiled by the very visible wires there, of course, which is a bit of a shame. But no, kudos for the valve gear there. That looks really, really good. The smoke box door is very impressive as well. You can see we have the separately fitted board there with the running number on it, which is great. We also have a very finely separately fitted smoke box dart, which is fantastic. And the entire smoke box door is removable, and that's how you chip the thing if you were going to fit this with DCC. I'm not going to do that on camera because I don't want to damage it, but uh, yeah, that can be done, and it's supposed to be nice and easy, that, which is good. The buffer beams look superb, as you can see we have the couplings pre-fitted as well as the vacuum pipes and we've got these ultra large, well they're large to me because I'm more familiar with double O gauge, metal buffers which are sprung and they've got some real resistance to them as well which means you can actually use them can't you as functional sprung buffers which is really really good to see. Go on then, I know you want to see the cab, so we've got really realistic looking glazed windows, they're really thick so they distort the light beautifully, <laughs> just so realistic. Around the back you've got actual uh, plastic grills on the windows there which is amazing. Oh come on, I'm putting it off on time, but look at the cab detail, this is just an incredible cab, it's better than the Terriers I would say. There's paintwork on all of the gauges, lots of the components seem to be separately fitted including the reverser and the regulator. The floor is painted with the wood panelling effect. Just everything is represented in there. It just looks wonderful. The cab is the best I've ever seen on any model, full stop. Absolutely incredible. And the same is true wherever you look on the model, really. I mean, the wheel set looks really, really fine, doesn't it? We've got nicely covered axles, which look good and realistic. Very fine coupling rods, by the way, connecting the wheels together, which is great. 
There's so much molded detail on the chassis, as you can see, we've got the axle boxes beautifully represented there. The rear trailing wheels are nice and free to move. They've got quite a lot of movement on them there. There's quite a complex little caddy which holds those and allows them to move around. So I'll be interested to see how that handles the various curves on my layout and that sort of thing. And around the back, you can see we have all of these separately fitted hooks, which I believe are there to uh, support various tools, I imagine, uh, that the crew would use. We've got more separately fitted lamp irons and again, a very similarly well detailed buffer beam at the back there. The level of detail is astounding. I can't possibly cover all of the different aspects of the model, but as you can see, for the money, the level of detail is just sublime on this. Uh, some people said to me when, when I did the Terrier review, oh, you know, these are just budget O-Gage Locos. Well, I don't believe you. I can't imagine a more detailed O-Gage model of a 14XX, and if such a thing exists, it certainly isn't going to be anywhere near the price of this, which I think is very applaudable, isn't it? So we'll talk about the mechanism, we'll get it onto the O-Gage layout and give it its first run. I can't wait to see this run. Fingers crossed the performance is going to be good. All right, so there it is then, the beautiful Dapol 1400 class on the track and ready to go. I can't wait to see how this thing runs. First of all, I've not attempted a full disassembly like I did with the Terrier. I just thought that would not be a good idea, given that this seems a little bit fragile. So I can't show you exactly what motor's inside. I would assume that it is the similar or same thing inside the Terrier, a nice big five pole motor with a flywheel on it. Um, and if that's any different, I guess I'll add an update at a later date if I learn any other. I can see though by looking underneath the loco that we do have proper bearings on the wheel sets. You can see the bearings there on the trailing wheels there, which are good. And funnily enough, the pickups are done the same way as the original double O gauge pickups were done. They're sort of plunger style pickups, um, which hopefully will do the job just fine. So the mechanism looks to be really, really good. It does have all wheel pickup, even the rear pony truck wheels have pickups on them, which is really, really good. So without any further ado, let's give this its first ever run. The instructions do say that no special running in is required, although I always do that because I think it's best. Um, but straight out of the box, here we go with the first run. I'm going to give it a try right now. Here we go. Fingers crossed. Oh, I tell you what, folks, that is a really nice runner straight away out of the box. Look at that. Right. Let's get it in the middle of the shot. I'll just stop it and make sure I'm in the right place. You can tell that it's got a flywheel because it stops so smoothly. So the Terrier's slow speed wasn't amazing. Let's see if this one is. Here we go. Oh, yes, it is. It's considerably better than the Terrier's. Wow, that is amazing. Look at the control there. That is unbelievably slow. A bit faster. Oh, it's got an amazing speed range, that must be said. Amazing, look at that. And it sounds a bit happier as well. There is a bit of motor noise coming from it, but it's just so beautifully smooth. Hang on, let me cut it dead. Wow, yeah. I'm turning the power off as quickly as I can here. And it stops nice and smoothly. That is fantastic. Right, well, let's send it up along the line then, see if we can get some speed out of it. Set it to about 50%. That is astonishing. That's a very good runner. That is now my best running O-Gage Loco by a long way. It's a bit quieter than the Terrier and definitely smoother. I didn't complain about the Terrier and it was a good runner, but uh, this one proves that performance can be even better than that. That is wonderful. Look at that. It does seem that the valve gear is static, and some of Dapol's O-Gage locos do have a working valve gear, but not this one. And there's also a light on inside the cab, which I'll try to show you at some point. That's quite nice as well, so we've got the firebox glow. Yeah, that is amazing. I'm really, really happy with that. <laughs> what a runner that one is. So I'm going to let this run in, if possible, and then I will let it run along with my new extension to the layout. As you can see, it goes all the way around a corner and to a little yard over on the other wall where there are some wagons waiting. Hopefully she'll manage the curves all right, fingers crossed on that. But uh, yeah, I'll let her run in and then I'll come back to you in just a second. All right. Okay, folks, I am back and I'm gonna say it right off the bat, this is the best performer I've ever seen from Dapol. I don't know what it is, maybe I've just been unlucky in the past, but they've never ran what right for me. 
This one though is by far the best. It's probably the best runner I've ever had full stop. It's so smooth, really, really nice to run. No noise whatsoever, and it can do a great crawl, as we've already seen. It's also reasonably powerful, 0.62 newtons. It's not mightily powerful, but it's not terrible either. I, I calculate that that should manage around nine coaches in O-gauge. So that's probably more than is reasonable. I do have some double O-gauge locos that are more powerful, though. I mean, the Hornby Princess, which is obviously tiny in comparison, that pulls about the same. So yeah, it's not that powerful, but I think it's more than fit for purpose, let's see. So I run it in on, well, <laughs> that's how I did it. Uh, it's a bit dodgy, of course. I don't have a rolling road for O-gauge stuff yet, but it did the trick and it's working just fine. I thought then I would try the loco over the points to get it back onto the outer line. And then we'll try it going around the room and see how it gets on. So with that, let me set it forwards again and let's send it across the points. Okay, here goes. The box said that this can handle second radius curves, and these are second radius points, so it shouldn't be a problem. Let's see. Yes, absolutely no problem at all. Let's try it in reverse, shall we, with the pony truck leading. See how that gets on. I'll try and make a smoother transition over them as well. Yeah, it's not a problem. It's very happy on points, isn't it? Wow, this is quite something. This is really a good performer, folks. Very impressive stuff. Beautiful. Right, let me change the points back then and we'll try it on my overly tight curve. Okay, here we go. Try and get it nice and steady so it's not going too fast around the curve. Hopefully it won't mind going around it backwards. Okay, nice and slowly does it then, let's see. It's actually quite a bit tighter than second radius in the center there because it, it has to be, well, the curve has to be finished before it meets the beam over the other side. But it appears to have done it. Just get the uh, beam out of the way there. There we go, folks. That is very impressive stuff. Fantastic. Yeah, that's very good, actually. So it can do better, slightly better than advertised when it comes to tight curves. And that, to me, is very impressive indeed. Well done, Dapple. What a performer. And watch this for a tight squeeze. Ooh, look at that. Millimetres to spare. Yes, it's only just possible to get track back there, but it is working, as you can see. Okay, so I've got some wagons here. I know they're not exactly prototypical. <laughs> Far from it. Yeah, they're not exactly auto coaches, are they? But hopefully they'll uh, serve to just uh, do a bit of running with, I guess. So let me try and get these coupled and see how it goes. Okay, I think that's job done. So let's haul them away. There's only four wagons here, so hopefully you should be able to manage those without any problems. What a truly mesmerizing model. Absolutely love this one. What a work of art. So here are some of my ratings then for the incredibly impressive Dapol 14XX. Where the detail's concerned, I don't think I've ever seen a more detailed model than this. True, I've only got two O-gauge locos, but the level of detail was truly phenomenal. I mean, the cab, there's no point trying to list the details. It is just amazing, absolutely amazing. So easily a five star there. The performance is also a five star for me. It is incredibly good at slow crawls. The Terrier wasn't, this one is even better. It clearly has a big flywheel inside because it's so smooth. It starts nice and smoothly and it does the same when it's stopping. Beautifully quiet, it just runs very, very nicely indeed. It's a five star performance. 
The pulling power was not that great. I measured that this could only haul around nine O-gauge coaches. The pulling force is 0.62 newtons, which is only a little bit more than the Hornby Princess in double O-gauge. So yeah, it's not the most powerful in the world. The Terrier was actually quite a little bit more powerful. The quality is where this falls down a little bit. I've had to knock one star off the quality for the poor packaging and the damage which occurred as a result, and another star because some of the decoration was a little bit dodgy with those etched number plates and also some of the paintwork was a little bit dodgy as well. Overall though, the quality is not terrible, but as I say, quite a lot of parts were damaged on mine, which is a shame, partly because of the level of detail, of course. Now the value for money though is pretty good in my opinion, £225, that's the RRP. I paid £191.25 for mine and free postage as well, Hattons actually offer free postage so if you want to check these out I have got a link down in the description. Yeah, I mean for what it is it's fantastic isn't it, I mean yes it's a lot of money but this is O-Gage, from other companies a model this detailed would cost an awful lot more. Obviously for me to have given this 5 star on value for money I think the quality would have had to have been a little bit better if not perfect. But besides that, yeah, the, the value is pretty good. Overall then, that is a very strong score of 8.68 out of 10. Into the ranking we go then. There we go, fourth, just above the Hornby Princess Royal. If I was going on the model alone and not the price and the quality that surrounded it, I think this would be top of the list very, very easily. But of course, I can't ignore the issues I had with it. It's a very good model though. I can highly, highly recommend it. Beautiful. To tell you the truth, I'm awestruck. Absolutely awestruck such an incredible model and the detail was all very well it was very impressive yada 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 but to see the thing run and to see it run so well was just mind-blowing what a model so folks i can highly recommend this one i guess <laughs> don't really need to say that but i'm sure it comes across anyway uh, if you'd like to pick one up i have an affiliate link down in the description i can highly recommend it uh, £191, well worth the money, obviously it's not cheap, but uh, I suppose in a way it is quite cheap really for what it is. Uh, well, thank you for watching folks, well done Dapol, what a machine this is, what a model. Thank you for your company, thanks for your time, and I think I'll spend the next, what do you reckon, four days now playing with this. So uh, I'm going on holiday now <laughs> with my new mate, and I'll see you on the next one folks. Cheers everybody. Thank you.